So that's a fairly comprehensive look at both the icing effects we can expect when we're flying the Twin Otter and also the systems that we're given to combat these effects. But you might take the view that as a simulation it's uh, still lacking somewhat in realism and in particular there's a, a number of shortcomings that we might point to. I mean one of these is, you know, this is not the fault of Aerosoft really, but um, there's no visual indication of icing or the onset of icing particularly airframe icing, which is a very significant part of the model and so it's actually quite difficult to know <laughs> when icing is starting to affect you. Um, as you've seen the only way to do it is to turn on the Aerosoft checklist. You can, you know, you can, you can resize this and move it around. The other thing you can do is um, you can change the transparency of that 2D panel so it's less obtrusive, but you know, that's just a giant fiddle and um, you know, for, for perfect realism you never want to have to look at that checklist, you know, that's the way I see it. So, you know, in real life if you'd look out the side window and you'd, you'd see some semblance of icing on the on the wings. You do, we have a function which says wing inspection light. as if being able to look out the window and um, turn the light on and be able to see something is going to be possible. Uh, the, that wing inspection light, as far as I can do, doesn't actually do anything at all. <laughs> so anyway, anyway, I'm not going to go on about that. So visual indication. Uh, the other thing is, uh, even when we get heavy icing on the airframe, you know, the only effects that we get, are, as I've gone through already, are increased drag and increased weight. We don't get any effect on the aerodynamic performance of the wing, except to the extent that, you know, if, if we're becoming overweight, we go down, we can't sustain level flight perhaps. But, whilst I was looking around, trying to find out about the icing in the Twin Otter and experimenting, I did come across something which a lot of people are probably familiar with already, I'm a bit behind the curve maybe, and that's a very simple gauge by a guy called Charles Owen and it, it's in a little file called ice10.zip which you'll find on many of the usual download sites and that means two things, It's one is it's a very um, comprehensive introduction to the effects of icing on aircraft and a discussion of how those things are modelled or not modelled in FSX well actually FS9 and as an addendum it sort of comments that most of this applies to FSX as well and then it describes some improvements that uh, can, can be made and the gauge does that uh, comes along with that does two things uh, the first thing it does is it gives us a visual indication in the cockpit of the onset of icing and the second thing it does is it actually adds extra features to the icing simulation in parallel to the FSX model um, in particular what it does is well, it does two things in particular that extend the FSX model. First of all, it um, notes the accumulation of structural icing, and once that accumulation reaches a particular limit, it starts to do things to try and simulate effects on the aerofoil performance of the wing and the tailplane. So you get stalls of the wing and stalls of the tailplane, or it tries to simulate those things basically by buggering up your controls. Um, now that's a huge innovation compared to what you get built into the default model and also into the Twin Otter Extended. Because it really means if you let the ice build up too much you're going to lose control. The second thing that the gauge does is alongside the regular, and, and this is, you know, duplicates in a sense something that Aerosoft has, has done independently. Alongside the regular model it, uh, it accumulates a separate ice weight which is intended to represent freeze, the effects of freezing rain. Now you remember that Aerosoft essentially does that in its own extension of the model. If you're flying in conditions between minus 11 and plus 1 degrees and it is raining, you will accumulate ice weight. So this ice 10 gauge does that as well and the weight is additive so the regular, regular accumulation of ice that FSX is tracking and the freezing rain ice that's been accumulated by the gauge 
you know, they add up to a total ice weight, and that's the that total is the one that's used to um, determine thresholds and and so on. It's a fairly confused explanation, but hopefully you'll figure that out. Now, there's good news and bad news here, really. With that, the, you know, the good news is it's, this thing exists. You can install it very simply, and it will work in FSX. You can, you have to go through a little bit of a tap dance to get the, I mean you can install it as a 2D panel, that's very, very straightforward. And then you just do shift 1 or shift 5 or whatever you do and you get a little, um, it's just a little rectangle. And it goes blue, amber or red. Um, we're not going to go into great detail about, the, about this, you can track it down and uh, try it out for yourself. Uh, you can install it in the virtual cockpit as well, that takes a bit more of a tap dance. But that's what I've done, I'll show you that in a little while. So that's the good news, and it, and it by and large it does what it says it's going to do. You know, particularly interesting is the, the the freezing rain model. So if you're flying something that's not the twin otter extended, you know that applies to any aircraft. But even if you're flying the twin otter extended, you know the fact that it's doing what the Aerosoft model is also doing behind the scenes means that the ice formation indicator that's displayed by the ice 10 gauge. Uh, although it's not tracking you know, specifically what the Aerosoft implementation is tracking, the two are pretty much in step. And so that means that you can trust the gauge, the ICE-10 gauge in the cockpit, to tell you what the Aerosoft ICE model is doing. Indeed, the only real difference is that the Aerosoft model accumulates ICE if you're flying in sub-zero conditions through snow as well as rain. The ICE 10 gauge specifically points out that flying through snow doesn't cause the same effect, effect as flying through freezing rain. Uh, I mean again you can read this for yourself but the, the rationale here is that um, freezing rain accumulates not on the flight s uh, surfaces, that's the wings and the tail, but it accumulates all over the fuselage because the water you know, runs on down the fuselage and um, Accumulates there. The other difference, actually, there's two differences now. I think, is that um, that the ice 10 ice that's attributed to freezing rain isn't cleared by the FSX de-icing boot or any of the de-icing de systems. Uh, and again, that's an authentic thing in real life. You can't. There, are, there are no systems. Well, there may be very modern systems that are trying to do this, but generally speaking, there are no systems that can clear ice accumulated on, say, the fuselage by the effects of freezing rain. And, and so that adds another layer of realism. You know, the only way to get rid of the effects of freezing rain uh, is to get out of the rain <laughs> as quickly as you can, or, you know, descend or ascend, um, so you're out of that. Again, another great realism factor. Now, I did say there was good news and bad news with the ice 10 gauge. The bad news is it kind of works, but it doesn't work very well. <laughs> it's full of bugs, actually. Now, you know, normally that would have been that. That would be the end of it. But um, in poking around, I discovered that this gauge is, you know, it's almost phenomenally simple in its execution. Um, it's an XML gauge. I'm not a gauge wizard by any uh, means. Uh, you know, I've very little idea about what it takes to make a gauge. But in exploring this gauge, I've discovered that the entire implementation is an XML script. Um, and it's about three pages of text long and I was able to figure out how it works and then go on to figure out you know what was wrong with it and there were lots of bugs so now it works for me pretty much as it's intended and uh, you know it's a great addition um, I'm not sure how I'm going to be able to make that script available to other people I'm sure I can just uh, show it to people ad hoc I'm not sure if I can get permission to upload it you know officially anywhere um, but we'll see, you know, if you're interested enough in making this work for yourself, I'm sure you'll be able to get that gauge from me. So what I'm going to do is just set that up and we'll have a quick look at it. Alright, here we go. I've set this up in a rather unorthodox way at the moment. Um, you're not going to be able to see this in detail. I'll just explain what I'm doing. I might try and get some close-ups on what I'm doing. But well, I'm in windowed mode, that's the first thing. My performance might look different. I don't run in windowed mode normally, but I've got various other things open. I've got the ice gauge installed, and um, I'll try and just show you that first. It's installed in the virtual cockpit. Um, 
you know, it's kind of difficult to install something in a virtual cockpit. I've, I've, you, you, what you basically have to do is look through the um, V cockpit zero one definition in panel dot CFG. And in fact, I don't know if this is what you have to do, but this is the way I've done it. You can identify some of the gauges on the virtual cockpit panel, and you can plonk this ice warning gauge basically over the top of one of those panels. And the way I've chosen to do it, which works well and is fairly unobtrusive, I've put it on the transponder display, where you may or may not see it. This is the transponder. The area where you would normally get the altitude readout, if we're in um, mo uh, mode C, I think that's called, we've got a little rectangle, which at the moment is sort of greyed out. You can't see any text on it. It's just a little blob probably on the video. But if we come back to that, that'll all it is, it's a little thing that says wing ice and it'll be blue the soon, you know, the soon as we start to accumulate any ice it turns blue when we get to, I think it's 10% of the aircraft's empty weight it'll turn amber and we'll start to get disruption of the flight controls potentially when it turns red, we're in serious trouble that's 20% uh, of the you know, the, the amount of ice accumulated is greater than or equal to 20% of the empty weight. So that's a serious amount of ice. So we'll look at that, we'll monitor that as we go. And uh, what else have I got here? We've, you know, we've still got the Aerosoft ice gauge available. There's zero ice at the moment because um, nothing's going on. The outside air temperature is above zero. Now, be, because I've been poking around inside this XML gauge, XML gauges, if you use Lua, Sorry, if you use Linda or if you use um, FSU IPC, you might be familiar with something called LVARs. LVARs are local variables that are used inside of XML gauges. And so I know the names of all the local variables in this gauge because I've poked around in the source code. And uh, indeed, I've changed some of the names to make more sense for me while I was trying to figure out how it worked. And but what's really interesting is you can watch those LVARs using things like FSU IPC and particularly Linda. I've got the Linda tracer up at the moment. I'll try and show you that. Uh, that's that's what the Linda tracer looks like. I must get a camera that has manual exposure. And the output from the and so I've selected the LVARs from there, and the output of that is displayed on the Linda console window. And we're going to watch variables called total ice weight, regular ice weight, and freezing rain ice weight. You just have to take my word for it as, as I call these out. The other thing I'm using is uh, a program. This is another absolutely brilliant program you can get for free. It's called AFSD. I don't know what that stands for. But it's, it's just a little program. It's just something that monitors all the things that are going on inside of FSX and the aircraft implementation and it allows you to see them and the reason I'm using it here at the moment is I'm looking in the weights and COG section and that has a parameter called ice weight so I can look at the ice weight that FSX thinks it's accumulating I can look at the ice weight and the freezing rain ice weight that have been accumulated by the ice 10 gauge and I can look at a representation of what Aerosoft's ice accumulation is tracking at the same time and we can compare them okay so all that said we're gonna go for a little ride and I'm just gonna talk through some of that as we go whoops Where's the runway? We came in this way, so... Oh, there's something coming in. Okay. I've just tweaked the weather conditions to put it back to the initial conditions um, so we've got a good comparison. 
Outside air temperature is still above zero, it's about uh, two, three degrees it looks like. It's raining. We've got no ice indications. Now let's look at all the indications. We've got the new ice 10 gauge on the transponder, remember, that's currently showing blank. The Aerosoft ice gauge shows zero percent. The FSX ice weight gay, uh, value in AFSD shows zero and the variables I'm watching in Linda show zero. So everything's as it should be. We're going to just take off and then uh, see what we see. We'll just stick it on autopilot, give it heading hold, we're going to climb to let's say 5500 feet, put it on an altitude alert, get the flaps in, come back a little bit on the power and on the props. Now let's see, we've got pitot heat on just as a precautionary measure. We haven't got the windshield heat on, so that's going to be a, an early clue to, uh, okay look I'm, I'm already looking out the corner of my eye, I can see the, the ice 10 gauge values are now, if I stick this in the middle, they're rising. So you can, I mean you might or might not be able to read them but we get values displayed when these things change. So a regular ice weight is currently 1.3, uh, freezing rain 2.75 is a pound, total weight is 6 coming up 7 and so on. So that's increasing. If I look at the ice weight value in AFSD, so this is what FSX knows about, 6 pounds, aerosoft gauge is showing 3.5% so as we see the um, we're accumulating on the ice 10 gauge freezing rain as well as regular ice what I didn't do was look at the ice 10 gauge in the virtual cockpit there it is so it's gone blue you may not read it it's kind of indistinct it's very small it says wing ice but we don't need to know about that all we need to know is if we see a blue light an amber light or a red light so we're climbing up with 3700 feet We've actually passed the top of the rain now, so what we should see is, and indeed I do see the regular ice weight monitored by the ice 10 gauge is continuing to rise, but the freezing rain value now remains constant. The Aerosoft gauge will continue to accumulate ice because it monitors both FSX regular ice buildup and freezing rain, so we're up to 7% now. Now the windshield's starting to ice up as well, so we need to put on the heater. 4,500 feet. Now just looking out the corner of my eye, I happen to know a little bit about the internals of this ice 10 gauge, so I know that uh, when the ice load is 10% of the empty weight of the aircraft, which in this aircraft is 6,850 pounds, we're going to we're going to go from blue to amber on this gauge and that's a sign that things are going to start to get out of control pretty soon unless we do something about it and we're at 47 pounds at the moment so we'll be looking for 68 pounds to see that gauge change so we're at uh, 53, 54 pounds of ice at the moment that's 11% on the Aerosoft gauge. We're at 64 pounds. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to make that gauge center stage 65 pounds. Remember when we get to 67, 68 and a half pounds, so 69 
which is going to come up. We want to watch this gauge. 68, 68 and a half. There you go. We're now in the amber zone. So ice is going to continue to accumulate. And that's it really. We're, you know, again we're just looking at the same thing in different ways. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to come off autopilot. I'm just going to show you a little taste of the consequences of being in that amber zone. Um, we're doing 130 knots at the moment. So we'll come off autopilot. Going to slow down a bit. Take a bit of power off. And now, what we're going to find is if we fly too slow now, that ice load is going to start to interfere with the handling of the aircraft. So if I just gradually level it off, and I slow it down just by pulling the nose up gradually. There we've got some kind of stall there and I've not got control. I've got it back now. We'll do that again. It looked like it was about 95 knots. There it is again, it's, it's stalled, so I'm putting rudder in. I'm trying to pull it up with the, the nose, but it's okay, that worked out. So you can see it's interfering with the flight controls. Now, you may already be familiar with this ICE 10 gauge and had to go with it yourself, but one of the things that didn't work properly or that was very unsatisfactory before I tweaked it was uh, when you get into this amber zone or the red zone where it, the gauge starts to interfere with the control of the aircraft. Basically if you were on autopilot it didn't do that so um, or, or indeed if it started to do that all you had to do is flip it onto autopilot and that would rescue you so <laughs> I've sorted that out. Uh, I'm on autopilot at the minute I'm gonna put us into a climb so that um, the speed's gonna fall off And we should see that uh, as we, I've got no hands on here, as we approach uh, critical speed, there you go, we get that stall again and uh, comes off autopilot. So there's no rescue in the autopilot now. And that's, and that's basically it. So we need to put the um, de-icing on now. So I'll put it to auto fast, we've got bleed air to power it. And again, I'm looking at the various indications. If you look at the aerosol, 27.1, 27.0. So that's falling on the aerosol gauge. Now, a slightly unrealistic thing about the way the built-in FSX de-ice function works. When you operate the de-ice function, it immediately sheds all of the ice from the wings and tailplane. So it goes back from whatever you were at to zero instantly. Now, that's not quite realistic. I suppose in real life, the ice would, it is a very unsophisticated system this, it's, it's basically just cracking the ice and then falls off in the airflow. So it would be, you know, not instantaneous but fairly rapid. Uh, but remember what it doesn't do, if I look at the numbers here, um, it doesn't shed the freezing ice, sorry, the freezing rain ice. So currently we've got regular ice weight zero because I've left the de-icing on as a preventive measure but we're back into the freezing rain and that's continuing to accumulate we've got 24 pounds 25 pounds of, of ice from there so the only way we can stop that happening even though we've got auto ice on we're still accumulating ice the only way we can prevent that is to get out of this rain which I'm going to do by ascending And incidentally, that the ice gauge has gone back to showing blue. That happened as soon as we shed all of the regular FSX accumulated ice. That goes back to blue. 
but don't forget that um, as we accumulate the, the ice attributed to the freezing rain that will flip back into the amber or red zone but for now because we've risen above the level of the rain that's freezing rain ice weight is staying static and indeed that will start to melt away as we find ourselves in air where the temperature is above zero so but for now we're going to continue to carry that as long as we're in freezing conditions so that's pretty much it I think we've covered everything to do with icing in the Twin Otter I do recommend that rather than stick with the kind of out of the box Twin Otter extended icing you do track down this ice 10 gauge and I will make the amended XML file available. I might upload it to the Aerosoft forum. That should be okay I think to do that. And you know with a little bit of tinkering you can get that gauge in your virtual cockpit. It means you don't have to use the Aerosoft um, checklist pop-up which is kind of intrusive especially if you want to do it like a real cockpit like this is here. Now, I also recommend that you do the tweaks that I've done to the well I mean presuming you use Linda to, I mean, this is a big presumption I suppose, but if you're using Linda to drive things from buttons and switches, it really is worthwhile doing a few mods to the scripts, um, particularly to, you know, introduce that power drop when you use the engine anti-ice functions. And taken as a whole, all of these things, you know, it really adds a significant dimension of challenge to fly in this aircraft in marginal conditions because you've really got an e a whole bunch of extra things to look out for. I mean I should say the engine failure modes seem really pretty good in terms of icing. You know they're unpredictable not just in terms of when they happen but but actually what how you deal with them. You know the, I've, there's been times when I've had both the intake heater on and the inertial separator and I've still had engine flame outs um, and then I discovered that you could uh, I discovered from reading the forums that you that you could restart the engine without using the starter by switching in the manual ignition but also one of the things if you read about the manual or continuous ignition and I mentioned this in my the video about the electrical system one of the things you do is you use that as a preventative measure. Um, so you can do that, and I have done that successfully. You know, when I found I've been having too many engine flame outs in spite of all the ice protection, I flipped the ignition onto continuous, and that protects against flame outs as well. So it's just a really nice, you know, complicated web of systems that you've got to manage, and uh, that's part of the satisfaction of flying something like this. And, and managing everything at once. So there you go, I hope you found that useful and I encourage you to do your own experiments. Uh, do track down the ICE 10 gauge, get the updated script, also get yourself a copy of PFSA. Is that what it's called? PFSA? Uh, if you're interested in poking around inside FSX.